to another edition of Taekwondo Life Magazine Live. My name is Mark Serianis. I'm your host. I'm a third Don Black Belt, and I'm the editor-in-chief of Taekwondo Life Magazine. Taekwondo Life Magazine is a member of the Believe Sports Network. Do you believe? Believe is the number one sports and podcast network for professionals. Today's program is brought to you by Bet Online, your online sports book experts. I want you to head over to Bet Online. Now that uh, the playoffs for baseball are, are headed into uh, right now, football season is starting to ramp up. We're going into the third and fourth week of football season. Uh, basketball and hockey right around the corner. I want you to go to betonline.ag and you can get your welcome bonus over there. We have really, really gotten good feedback from our fans and from our subscribers about their experiences with Bet Online. Uh, they find it to be uh, much better than many of the other online sports book uh, platforms. Uh, I know when I go over there, I don't, I don't really bet a lot, but I do like to go over there and look. Movies are coming out, um, mayoral races, California recall, whatever it is, they're always doing something. So bet online, your online sports book experts. My name is Mark Zarianis. As I said, I'm a third Don Black Belt. Today's show is kind of fun. Uh, the topic we're talking about, I, I, previewed this last week is we're talking about Bruce Lee now over the course of the time that I've done this um, being the age that I am most of the people that I have spoken to have in one way or another said if Bruce Lee wasn't the most significant influence on their entry into the martial arts and martial arts practice that he was one of them Today, in preparation for a review I'm doing of a new Jesse V. Johnson movie, I saw Scott Adkins' interview with Daniel Bernhardt. Daniel Bernhardt is a great martial artist who was in um, the, uh, the Matrix Reloaded, The Matrix. Uh, he was in the John Wick films. He's in a great new film called Hell Hath No Fury. Both Scott Adkins and Daniel Bernhardt said they're major influence from films and in getting into the martial arts was Bruce Lee. Now, Bruce Lee had a short, short career, right? But a long legacy. Uh, he didn't live to be very old. Uh, he died in 72, 73. He only made a couple of films of which, of course, Enter the Dragon is the most famous. Some television work, some interviews. And his legacy has lived on all of these, these years into the 80s, 90s, uh, 2000s, and now 20 years and two decades into 2000, we're still talking about Bruce Lee. But the topic of today's show is, is Bruce Lee, as depicted in the Quentin Tarantino film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, accurate? The arrogant, maybe not so adept, uh, braggart, that Tarantino portrays that, that raised so much controversy. Now, this movie hasn't, didn't just come out. It, it came out obviously a while ago, but the reason that I'm raising the issue now is because of the fact that I thought it was interesting at the time that that came out. And I listened to Michael Mo, who was a Taekwondo master and played Bruce Lee speak about his perspective on it. I listened to Shannon Lee talk about her um, being upset about Tarantino's uh, portrayal. I listened to Tarantino talk about uh, the fact that other than Shannon Lee, who he understands, he doesn't really care about other people's perception. A, it's fiction. And B, he believes his perception of Bruce Lee was based upon some legitimate uh, contextual information. I didn't really focus on that too much until I saw a film that was just released. It's a several year old film that was just released on Netflix called Birth of the Dragon. This film is a film about, we've talked about this, but and, and people have talked about this a little bit. Um, it's a very well-known incident, but the details of this fight are not so well-known. Bruce Lee's fight with uh, Wong Jackman. Now, many people say that that fight was related to uh, Chinese desire to stop Bruce Lee from teaching Westerners, uh, others talk about it as a fight about first superiority. Uh, it is pretty much clear that Bruce Lee won the fight, but whether or not he won the fight handedly or whether or not it was difficult, 
a little bit different. Birth of the Dragon is a good film to watch. It really is more a film about Wong Jokman than Bruce Lee. However, in that film, Bruce Lee is very much depicted in a way very similar to Quentin Tarantino. I was then watching the Ip Man films and Bruce Lee's characterization and his portrayal there, also not so different from Tarantino's. So there is this thread as to whether or not Bruce Lee was a really arrogant um, braggart, as well as a, a great martial artist. And I started to think to myself, is this a product of people's attempt to tear down Bruce Lee? Or is it an accurate depiction that is now coming to the surface because we're far enough away from Bruce Lee's passing that people are free to talk about that? That's the issue that we explore. I will tell you that I don't know the answer to the question, uh, but I did read a lot on this. Um, and there are some mixed feelings on this. There really are some, some mixed feelings on this. I do think at the end of the day, it is quite possible that, and one of the things that the Birth of the Dragon film talks about is um, that that fight was a, a watershed time in Bruce Lee's life. And he did transform from becoming a, being a Kung Fu and Wing Chun practitioner to developing the style of Jeet Kune Do. And perhaps there was a change in his level of humility at that point. But the person I talked to today is someone who I probably maybe should have spoken to earlier, but he sort of got pushed aside because he's my brother and I didn't want to just simply interview him. But he has a quite a large uh, pedigree, a martial arts pedigree. He's very educated and while you graduate and while you postgraduate, uh, he is a black belt in multiple styles. He's trained with uh, seminars, camps with Steven Seagal and many other famous people. He's trained in uh, uh, jujitsu. He's trained in judo. He's trained in taekwondo. He's trained in uh, weapons. Um, and he's been a student of Bruce Lee his entire life. Uh, I know certainly that Bruce Lee was his inspiration for getting into the martial arts. When I was a child, uh, he introduced me to all the Bruce Lee films and he walked around with this paperback uh, biography of Bruce Lee that I can still remember the cover. The cover had a picture from that Enter to the Dragon, that, that fight at the beginning with Sammo Hung. And uh, it was a war-torn, um, tattered paperback because he from, from reading it and studying it so much. So we talked to him today. We get his opinion and his feeling on whether or not Tarantino's philosophy and perspective on Bruce Lee was accurate. And more importantly, even if it was accurate, does it change the legacy of Bruce Lee? This part, I do have an answer. And the answer, in my opinion, is no. You can't undo the legacy of Bruce Lee, even if you change your opinion of Bruce Lee as who he was as a man, a philosopher, a martial artist, a human being. His impact on the martial arts is clear, and it continues to be quite significant. Now we have things like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood where we're talking about Bruce Lee, but we also have Birth of the Dragon. We also have Showtime's show Warrior, which is now being renewed due to popular demand. So love for Bruce Lee is probably as great as ever. I think I'm interested and I'm glad we're talking about this. I look forward to hearing your feedback and your opinion on that. I also look forward to seeing you on the mat. My name is Mark Sorianis. I hope you enjoy this interview. Uh, we're going to link some information, including some interviews that Bruce Lee did, uh, some interviews that Bruce Lee did um, around the time of some of these movies. So you get a little sense as to whether or not he comes off uh, as somebody who's humble or somebody who is um, egotistical. This episode, as I said, is presented to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your online sportsbook expert, and you can go to the show description and we will link your ability to go to Bet Online if you have not signed up and get your online welcome bonus. On behalf of Taekwondo Life Magazine, my name is Mark Sorianis. Thank you very much. All right. So the topic today, what we're speaking about, and I have a very interesting guest that I'll introduce, We've spoken about him before. Uh, but what we're speaking about today is whether or not uh, Quentin Tarantino had it uh, correct. Uh, much controversy uh, 
arose after his portrayal of uh, Bruce Lee, Michael Moe's portrayal, uh, Taekwondo master Michael Moe's portrayal of Bruce Lee in the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, Shannon Lee came forward and uh, expressed great uh, dismay over the arrogant and cartoonish uh, depiction of Bruce Lee. In the film, if you haven't seen it, it's, it's very interesting. The Mo manages to capture the uh, physical likeness of Bruce Lee, I think, with great accuracy. The reason that we're talking about this now is that I had the opportunity to premiere and preview, preview um, Netflix's release of an older film from 2016 called Birth of the Dragon, uh, a film about a very um, po popularly known but not much known about um, subject, which was Bruce Lee's uh, fight with uh, Wong, Wong Jackman. Um, and in that film, what really struck me was that the producers of those film, while they had a little bit of a different take, had a very similar take on Bruce Lee as Tarantino. Their portrayal of, of Lee, which was based on a, a series of articles, which is what the film is based on, was a extremely arrogant, um, extremely cocky individual. And I decided in thinking about that, that I should explore this topic further. Um, and then I thought about the person that I should speak to is somebody that is right in front of my nose, but that I haven't interviewed very much, which is that my own brother, Peter Zoriano. So we'll give you his, uh, his martial arts resume. But from this time that I was a young child, he, he was walking around with the Bruce Lee biography. I forget the name of it. He'll probably tell you the name of that biography. Um, and, you know, watching Bruce Lee films, imitating Bruce Lee as somebody who knows about the martial arts and who knows about Bruce Lee. And I thought that he was a good resource. So Peter, welcome. Thank you for joining Taekwondo Life hey, Magazine. Thanks for having me, Mark. Appreciate it very much. Uh, no, no problem. So first of all, tell us a little bit about your um, martial arts pedigree. Sure. So Yes, uh, I became a fan of Bruce Lee very early on. The first book I read was The Legend of Bruce Lee, uh, Alex Ben Block's famous book from right after Bruce died, like in 1972, 1973. And I had been in pursuit of uh, training in the martial arts uh, almost, almost from that point. Um, dabbled here and there for a while. Uh, martial arts schools were not that popular, uh, as popular as they are now. So... Um, it was difficult to find uh, a school until I came upon and started training with Grandmaster Y.H. Park, um, who I consider to be my first and primary uh, uh, instructor. Um, volume, volume. Uh, so yes, yeah, so, so training with Y.H. Park. So I trained with Grandmaster Park for from probably 1992 until, um, I don't know, about 10, 10 or 12 years after that. Um, rose in the ranks uh, with Grand Esther Park um, and um, continued my training with, uh, with the Goshen Budo Jiu Jitsu. Uh, felt, I felt the need to maybe present a little bit of a compliment to uh, Taekwondo's traditional uh, kicking, punching uh, with some of the ground based fighting, um, judo, and some of these others. So I trained for several years. Uh, with uh, Xi'an uh, Robert Hansen in Goshen Budo Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, I achieved a second degree black belt, the Nidan in Goshen Budo Jiu-Jitsu, which was primarily based in uh, locks, throws, chokes, ground fighting, um, a, a lot of traditional self-defense waza, things of that nature. I also trained, continued training with um, uh, one of uh, Xi'an's, two of Xi'an's students, actually, uh, Xi'an uh, Joe Brogner and Xi'an Howard Popkin in uh, Daitu Ruaiki Jiu-Jitsu, trained with them, with those gentlemen for a little while, uh, trained with, um, in kickboxing and mixed martial arts with Chris Cardona uh, for several years and taught there at the Kickboxing Academy as well. Um, you know, trained in Yang style Tai Chi, a little bit with weapons, uh, trained in Bo and Sai. Um, so, you know, have a breadth of experience, trained a little bit in Aikido. I've had the opportunity to sample, uh, to experiment, and to kind of be uh, somewhat objective on looking at uh, all different types of martial arts, martial arts that are uh, more focused in self-defense, martial arts that are more focused in um, 
uh, sport and competition, martial arts that are focused in more tradition. Studied a little Shotokan karate, which is a very traditional based karate system, uh, as I said. So that's kind of my, my, my background, been an enthusiast uh, of martial arts. Um, developed, a, developed a philosophy about self-defense uh, in which my, my, the EVADE system, the acronym EVADE, uh, came from the, uh, my synthesis and understanding of the importance of presenting uh, reliable self-defense for the non-practitioner. Uh, my, my approach was many people don't have time, uh, may not have time to train religiously in the martial arts to prepare themselves, but is there something we can offer the average citizen so that they are able to uh, uh, prepared you know, to defend themselves and the evade system you know looks at the breadth of self-defense including you know awareness visualization attitude you know defense and these di these different aspects of it so um it's kind of kind of where we're at right now it's a very broad uh, pedigree and, and resume and uh probably uh as we've talked in the past about the notion that bruce lee is the first mixed martial artist, right? There's many who say that, although uh, Jean, Jean LaBelle may say that he actually has that title, but there are many who, who would argue that Bruce Lee is the first uh, mixed martial artist. So certainly, I, I think that that's certainly interesting. Um, you know, over the course of the years and all the years I've done this, and, and I've interviewed everyone from Olympic athletes to uh, Michael Jai White to Willie Nelson to um, Chuck Norris to you know, tons of, of movies, almost every single one, if, particularly if they're over the age of 30, has said um, their primary influence, their primary reason for getting into the martial arts was Bruce Lee. Um, there are some that have specific reasons. A guy, Phil Pierce in, in London, told me, you know, he was assaulted outside a bar, right? That was his reason for getting involved. Other people, uh, you know, certainly different reasons. But, but in terms of a uh, influence right um if you're younger it might be the karate kid right it might be right. uh, if you're if if you were uh born you know and after the, the the late 70s and the early 80s it might be the karate kid but uh bruce lee but the question now becomes you know bruce lee is so revered um his philosophies are are so um uh, ingrained in our uh, in our culture was he and the arrogant um sort of cartoonish character that was portrayed in both uh, Birth of the Dragon and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And then the subsequent follow-up question, which we'll get to later is, does that impact his legacy? But let me ask you that question. Do, from your knowledge, is, is that an accurate representation of, of who Bruce Lee was? Sure. So I've seen probably everything. Um, I've obviously seen every one of Bruce Lee's movies, read many books uh, about Bruce Lee written by um, Little and by his wife and by a variety of people. I actually wrote a paper in a doctoral program uh, about was Bruce Lee a cosmopolitan educator um, in which I break down and analyze the contribution of Bruce Lee um, to popular culture. Uh, and, I, and in comparing and looking at the uh, segment from the, um, uh, from the Once Upon a Time in America movie, the, the movie- the, Hollywood. Uh, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, my apologies. Looking at the Bruce Lee character in that movie and looking at obviously the other movie, Birth of the Dragon, um, in the Tarantino movie, um, the segment with the Bruce Lee character is extremely a caricature. Um, Bruce Lee was nothing like that. There, it is, it, he is and he isn't in the sense that Bruce Lee was very um, confident. Bruce Lee um, was a little bit brash at, the time, at times but Bruce Lee was able to back up everything that he, he said. Um, Bruce Lee was challenged. There are many, many reported cases, documented cases of Bruce Lee being challenged by extras on the set of his movies. And he disposed of the extras in 30 seconds. I mean, there was no competition. Um, Birth of the Dragon also uh, representing Bruce Lee in, in, in a very uh, arrogant way. I think the most accurate representation of Bruce Lee uh, in movies, in popular cu current movies, is going to be the Jason Scott Lee movie. Um, that movie, I think, is probably... Dragon, right? That, that one is called Dragon, I believe? Is the um, uh, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, right? Yes. That movie is probably the most accurate, and I'll tell you why, because in that movie, Bruce Lee balances 
confidence with humility. Uh, Bruce Lee, I think, had a lot of insecurity. Um, he was battling prejudices, prejudice at a time in which uh, Asians were not accepted in major roles uh, in movies. He was married to a non-Asian. That created a lot, even within, uh, even uh, Linda's mother was not particularly accepting of Bruce at first. Um, so, so that movie, I think, uh, did a very nice job of portraying Bruce in, uh, in a more accurate way. There, there's a lot of interesting things, probably um, some of the best places to really get an understanding of Bruce Lee, the person, is to look at two very important interviews. Um, the first interview took place in 1965. It was the Green Hornet screen test. Yes. Uh, that's an excellent, uh, Bruce is talking about, he just had his son, Brandon. He's talking about um, martial arts. The interesting thing is you can see the, the, the demeanor in 1965 of Bruce Lee. He is extremely um, humble. He is extremely polite. And um, he would see the enthusiasm that he, that he generates when he's asked to demonstrate martial arts, right? Nobody is familiar with it. The cameraman comes over, he's demonstrating martial art techniques and you can see the energy and the enthusiasm he has. The other very important interview um, as it pertains to Bruce Lee and, and what Bruce Lee was like, and it shows an evolution of him as a person is that the 1971 interview with the, on the Pierre Burton show. Uh, Pierre Burton, I guess, was a gentleman who um, was interviewing famous people and he was in China at the time. And he did an interview. That's where the Be Like Water, my friend, um, uh, quote comes from, the Pierre Burton show. And there's an evolution of Bruce from 1965 to 1971. But you'll see a lot of the same elements of his personality um, where Bruce is, you know, he's a gentleman. He is, uh, he's intelligent. He's articulate. He studied uh, philosophy at the University of Seattle, where he met Linda, where he started his own um, martial arts group and built a, a following. Um, I had the opportunity and the honor to um, meet and train with Jimmy DeMille, who unfortunately just recently passed away a few months ago. Um, Jimmy DeMille was in his 90s, living in Hawaii. I brought him from Hawaii to, uh, in, the, in the 1990s to the Silent Flute. Um, to train with us. Uh, he taught us and worked with us on the one-inch punch. He actually did a demonstration in which he held an egg, hard-boiled egg, and he broke boards without breaking the egg. It's, uh, and he talked about, but he talked about Bruce Lee. And he said that Bruce Lee was a vicious, vicious fighter. Now, DeMille was probably 6'3", 6'4", 250 pounds. And in his youth, he was the undefeated United States Navy boxing champion. And uh, he was, he said, we were afraid of this man. This man was, this man could do everything he said he could do. And he exuded the confidence from the fact that he could back it up. But he said that Bruce was an extremely, you know, a, a generous man, a nice guy. Uh, there's a couple of really good interviews um, with Jackie Chan, who also, really had the opportunity to get to know Bruce Lee. He was an extra stuntman in several of Bruce's movies. And he tells a really cool story where in Enter the Dragon, Bruce hits him in one of the stick fighting scenes. And yes. Jackie goes down. And he talks about how Bruce was so worried about him and, you know, talking to him and are you okay? And then he talks about the rest of the day. Every time, every time he saw Jackie, he went, like this, and uh, then the, uh, when they needed an extra for uh, a night scene, Bruce said, Jackie, when they needed an extra, because they made extra money, right? So if you, made, if you worked at night, you made extra money. If you fell into the water, you made extra money. And he kept re recommending Jackie for all of these things. Um, so I just, you know, everything that I know, everything that I've read, interviews that I've seen with people like James Coburn, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Dan Inosanto, um, they all spoke very, very fondly of Bruce. Um, Bruce was intense. He was serious. He took the martial arts seriously. You know, he didn't, he didn't, he believed in, you know, the, in finding truth in the martial arts, right? He felt that for years and years and years, traditional martial artists, you know, were not, were not revealing the truth behind martial arts, that they were perpetuating, you know, uh, rituals and traditions that, that were not 
you know, they, was, they were not time tested. Um, and don't forget, Bruce Lee also was, uh, was a guy that, that grew up in the streets of Hong Kong. He fought, I mean, people, people talk about Bruce Lee, right? And they, they, they kind of try to challenge his, his authenticity by saying he never competed in tournaments. And right. They, the credibility of his fighting skill. Meanwhile, Bruce fought in the streets. I mean, he didn't have to fight in tournaments. Um, so yeah, so so to answer the question, I, I find that the, that the representations of Bruce Lee in both of those films, um, especially the Tarantino film, is in no way, shape, or form representative of of who Bruce Lee was. Bruce Lee was a much more complex, a very a much deeper, a deep thinker. Um, yeah, I mean, there's the persona and there's the real man. The screen persona is one thing, but but Bruce was, and Bruce understood, I think, the burden that he carried was that he represented the Asian people, right? He was the a representative of the Asian people, and he was carrying the Asian people into, you know, into the next century uh, in terms of, you know, so I, I think he took that, took strong responsibility very interesting there's a there is a um there is a somewhat of a myth but there is a, a, a perpetuated story that bruce did not get the um kung fu part because he didn't look you know he was too asian the reality of that story is that one of the reasons why bruce didn't get the part was that the film was looking for a very passive docile person and bruce exuded such intensity and such energy and bruce is the first to admit that his philosophy was to hit first and to ask questions later right um that, which is very contrary to the kung fu uh david carradine role sure you no know, was more about passivity right and, and fighting as a last resort so you know there's a lot of interesting things there well what about let me ask you a question about timing which is interesting because you you raised some issues about Bruce Lee in in those interviews um, but one of the things is that's a little bit distinct obviously the 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 movie Birth of the Dragon is about Bruce Lee it's really more about uh Wong Jackman really but yeah. it's it's Bruce Lee is a central character in it um, the Tarantino has got a much smaller role but to some degree that the first movie deals to some degree with the transformation right um the movie, the culmination of the film is the fight, and their, their version of the fight is very different from Linda Lee's version of the fight, yeah. right? It's a very different version, but but regardless of that, the film ends to some degree with Bruce Lee being um, more, uh, being transformed, right? He goes from, from uh, Wing Chun to the foundations of Jeet Kune Do. Um, is there the sense that there were two Bruce Lees and that the Bruce Lee prior to that was, although the, although uh, once upon a time in Hollywood takes place later, right. It is a fictional story that the, the, for, for the purposes of it being um, central to his ability to uh, highlight his character strength, the Brad Pitt character strength that he utilized an earlier version of Bruce Lee and that Bruce Lee was more, or is it simply in your opinion, based on what you're saying that, that, that never was, was Bruce Lee's character. So I think if I understand what you're saying, I think what you're saying is that it, though it may be somewhat inaccurate in terms of the time frame, that the earlier version of Bruce Lee, the, the pre g Kune Do Bruce Lee may be the character we're being represented in right. the confrontation. The truth of the matter is that, um, you know, Bruce Lee spent, Bruce Lee had five years of formal training in Wing Chun with Ip Man, um, and that was really it. Uh, he, he considered himself at first to be a Wing Chun stylist. Uh, the, Jock, the Wang Jok Man fight in particular was a fight that caused Bruce Lee to have an epiphany about his fighting style. Um, he felt that Wing Chun was too slow. It was too linear. Uh, even though he won the fight fairly handedly um, based on the uh, Linda Lee and other witness eyewitness testimony, he was not happy with himself. And I think that Bruce um, was a perfectionist and he was constantly looking to um, improve, you know, an evolution of his system. He studied, and don't forget the Bruce Lee style, the unorthodox style of the right hand lead, which Bruce Lee more or less developed because don't forget most traditional fighting, the, the strong side is in the rear, right? Boxers boxing with the, uh, the cross hand is in the back. Bruce Lee stood the other way. And that came from fencing. 
right? When you fence, you fence with your, with your dominant hand in front. Um, so Bruce Lee really studied. He studied wrestling. He studied boxing. He's trained with, you know, he studied the tapes of, of Muhammad Ali. And the Wong Jack Man fight really was something that, that uh, created um, the evolution in his mind of the fact that he needed to, he needed to improve the system. Uh, and, and what he did was he determined that um, people were constrained. I think that the way Bruce would, would see it is that most traditional martial artists were wearing shackles and they needed to free, them, free themselves. Uh, he had a conversation, he had an interview and a discussion with Danny Nasanto in which he told Dan, you know, Dan, you're Filipino, but don't let the fact that you're Filipino limit the way you express yourself in your martial art. You know, Jeet Kune Do is a way of intercepting fist, but it's not an art. It's mistakenly called an art. It is a philosophy about how each individual person expresses themselves in martial arts, and it's different for everybody. It's not the same for everyone and anyone that tries. To, and that's why there's a big debate today about people that teach Jeet Kune Do. Who is a direct, are there any people left that are a direct lineage from Bruce Lee? Or are there people that are teaching uh, Jeet Kune Do that are second and third generation instructors who have changed and altered, uh, uh, altered the system? But uh, I, I, don't, I don't think, I, I think that Tarantino may have been, may perhaps, it would have been, it, it would have demanded a, a real understanding of Bruce and a real kind of real in depth to have try to purposely capture that. Um, but even in that case, uh, you know, Bruce, Bruce's behavior uh, was, was not, you know, that was not an accurate portrayal of his behavior. And he, and he, he dominated the fight against Wong Jack Man anyway. Um, clearly dominated the fight. It's just that the fight should have been over in five minutes and it maybe took him 15 minutes and he was tired in the fight or his flu, um, he would have liked to have been. So that's kind of where where uh, you know came from. Okay, interesting. So so in um, kind of winding down, here's my question, because we live in a time right when it's very um, it's very uh, vogue to tear down. Right, we're in a tear down culture. Right, it's criticized to tear down, which is part and parcel of that. Um, but to me, to some degree. If you look at the um, Tarantino depiction of Bruce Lee, I think that there's a two ways to spin it, right? One is the way that Linda Lee, which I mean, Linda Shannon, um, Shannon Lee, which, you know, Tarantino was very respectful. He said, I understand. I, he goes, I don't entertain anybody else's criticism of my depiction of Bruce Lee, but I understand Shannon Lee. It's her father, right? So I thought that was very, but to some degree, he's trying to create um, uh, an identity for a character and saying that that character Brad Pitt's character is the toughest guy around. And who does he choose for that guy to fight? He could have chosen somebody else, right? But he chose Bruce Lee. So to some degree in watching it, I think you could make the argument that it was a, um, it was really honorary to Bruce, to Bruce Lee, as opposed to the way that it's been, been twisted. So I, I, there's no right and wrong answer, but my question, and I guess, is what is your perspective on that in terms of, of, of seeing it? Well, you know, what? it goes back to, to this saying, right? There's a lot of ways of looking at this, right? People would say there's no such thing as bad publicity, right? The fact that Bruce Lee is being recognized, acknowledged, paid homage to 30, 40 years after his death, um, you know, says something about the significance in pop culture of this man. And don't forget... Tarantino chose to uh, look at a particular time frame, look at a particular incident, but he did not necessarily bring color and bring focus to every aspect of that time frame. He chose certain things to hone in on and certain things not to hone in on, on purpose. And the fact that he did hone in on Bruce Lee um, definitely is, is somewhat tributary to Bruce Lee. I do also agree with the fact that it was part of his purpose to try to give the Brad Pitt character credibility. And what's a better way than to give credibility to your character than to have him fight the toughest guy in the block. And if he beats the toughest guy in the block, then automatically he retains the credibility. So I do see, I definitely see that. And I think that with a guy like Tarantino, you have to look at his portrayals as being very tongue in cheek anyway. 
I don't know that, um, and I don't believe that there was any disrespect intended at all. Um, you know, and not not in the very least. I mean, look um, at look at Kill Bill. I mean, uh, the characters uh, wears the Enter the Dragon, the female the Enter the game Dragon, of the Game of Death, uh, Game of Death. I'm sorry, uh, game, yeah, the, the Game, game the Game of Death, 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 death jumpsuit. Right, 100%. He certainly is somebody who has a great deference to the films of that time and 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 to Bruce Lee and you're and you're talking about somebody who in Inglorious Bastard killed Hitler right changed history and killed Hitler and then certainly in the end without giving too much away of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood certainly uh dramatically changed history so we we're on the one hand you can enjoy the fact that he killed he killed Hitler and the Nazis but on the other hand be offended by his portrayal of Bruce Lee to me was really kind of confusing because it wasn't portrayed as it's not a historical film also, I think the other thing you have to understand is that, um, you know, we have to look at things from a business perspective. And no matter what, there is the, the, the need and desire to drive interest and to drive business. And a controversy is, is helpful and positive from a business perspective, sure. right? So he's creating a little bit of controversy in his portrayal of Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee Enterprises, whether it be Shannon Lee as, as the daughter or Shannon Lee as the representative of Bruce Lee Enterprises, comes back they go back and forth it drives interest people are now you know googling and looking up and maybe people that you know didn't know a lot about bruce lee or are more interested in finding out more about bruce lee and you know i i think there's uh there's definitely something there as well um you know it's almost it's almost tantamount to uh think about um you know uh uh wrestling right the uh, uh the wwf right creating these controversies between two 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 rivals sure. who are gonna fight with each other you know there's a certain amount i'm not saying that this is a staged thing by any means but i do think that the drama and the hubbub that surrounds this type of controversy drives interest and drives publicity. sure we're to look we're, we're talking about it so i mean we're talking about it right, right. Um, and there's been a ton of books i mean even within the last couple of years uh, i'm reading a book here by paul, paul bowman called Beyond Bruce Lee, um, you know, there are, are a number of books that are, that are still currently being written um, looking at, at Bruce Lee, not, not only as the martial artist, but Bruce Lee the person, Bruce Lee the philosopher. Um, you know, there's so, so it, it, Bruce Lee, you know, died in 1972. You're talking about what? Uh, that's 55, like about, oh, about 49 years ago, 48, whatever it is. It's, it's a long time ago that, that, that he's been dead. Um, and he definitely still... Uh, you know, brings a lot of uh, interest. Um, and he definitely, you know, if you look at Enter the Dragon in the opening scene, um, you can see the, the, the advanced thinking of Bruce Lee. That, that's, a, that's a no rules MMA, you know, UFC type, right. of, uh, type of a fat fight with Sam Hung, right? That's great. Well, I appreciate your, your feedback and your thoughts on it. I, I think it, it was very helpful. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to link um, some articles on this topic, and I will uh, try to link that. Um, if you could, if you could have a good link for the uh, any of those two interviews yep. with Bruce Lee, send yeah, them to the, me. The interviews, yeah, I'll send you the, the links for the interviews for sure. Well, I appreciate it, and uh, if there's any books that you suggest, if you yep. send me those titles, uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely link them in the articles. So I want to awesome. thank you for talking to us tonight. And uh, when we have more Bruce Lee questions or questions of her that require uh, related scholarly uh, feedback. You may want to do a, a story about the uh, the martial arts background of Elvis. I can also give you a lot on that one, too. Yeah, that's, a, that, that's definitely interesting. Uh, I, I, we can go into the whole representation of, uh, of Elvis. And then we can also talk about the, uh, the common links between Elvis and Seagal with the... Um, Ed Parker connection as well. Well, we'll we'll, we'll save it for another time. I did want to talk because I, I know that there is a common. I was reading uh, when I was reading about Bruce Lee and the issue about uh, uh, injuring stunt people and fighting stunt people on the set. It did remind me a lot of my inter the interview that I I had with some stunt people who told me that uh, Steven Seagal really likes to <laughs> injure stunt people. So I, I did see a little bit of similarity, and then yeah. there's th that notion. So well, thank you very much for talking yeah. to us today, and um, uh, I look forward to speaking to you in the future. Thank you. Thank you.